In this lecture, we will solve another example where we will try to find out the shear flow in a closed cross section skin stranger idealized beam and uh, also the shear center. Okay, so the cross section shown is uh, the is one of the tail surfaces which has been idealized into a skin stringer model with six booms. Each boom has an area of two millimeter square. Okay, so this cross section is symmetric about x axis, and a shear force S Y, which is six kilonewton, is passing through the shear center of the cross section. What we need to find is the shear flow in the cross section because of the applied S Y, as well as the location of the shear center, which is defined by zeta from the web, from the larger web. of the cross section okay as shown in the figure so the dimensions are given okay the uh, the the curved portion on the extreme left hand side has a length of uh, 14 mm and the area shown by the shaded blue shaded one i mean this one is 20 mm square so this portion of the area has an area of 20 mm square of course okay but uh, of course i mean this is not a solid area but the area of that portion of the cross section is 20 mm square now how do we so so uh, we have already uh, seen in the last example that how to find out the shear flow so i will quickly solve that problem i will not spend uh, much time on finding out the shear flow on the cross section because of the applied shear force sy but i will spend more time on finding out the shear center okay which is uh, in in where we are we are yet to solve a solve an example okay so let me first quickly find out the uh, shear flow so to find out shear flow for this cross section since this is symmetric about x axis and uh, so that leaves i x y to be equal to 0 okay and uh, and also sx being zero your uh, the expression for shear flow which is qr minus qr minus 1 is going to be simply sy by ixx into br yr okay as simple as that so the only sectional property that i need is ixx which is going to be twice let us find out so uh, uh, each of them has an area of 2 mm so i can just take two outside twice because of the symmetry two because each cross sectional area is 2 mm square into uh, one is going to be 4 square okay the plus 3 square plus 2 square okay and if i find this out it is going to be 116 mm 4 so name, let me name the booms so uh, this is going to be boom 1 this is 2 this is 3 okay so uh, considering q16 to be equal to q0 okay rather q61 is equal to 0 instead of 16 let us say q61 because we will move in this direction so let me call q61 is equal to q0 if that is the case let us quickly find out the shear flow in each of the portion so q12 therefore is going to be minus 6 into 10 to the power 3 by 116 into 2 into 4 plus q0 which is going to be minus 
into 10 to the power 3 by 29 plus q0. Okay, similarly q23 is going to be minus 6 Okay, and Q three four Okay, so uh, if we uh, get all this, then I can say Q45 because of symmetry is going to be Q23 and Q56 because of symmetry is going to be Q1, right? So if we get all this, then by using Bethel's theorem, okay, since using say QDS is equal to zero since SY is passing through the sense here center. Okay, so if I if I if I elaborate the, this integral, then this integral, if I elaborate, this is going to uh, be I will I will separate out q zero so q zero into all the lengths so q zero into eight plus two into 6 square plus 1 square that is for 1, 2 and 5, 6 okay plus so this is uh, plus 2 into again 6 square plus 1 square okay plus 40 right that is for Q0 because Q0 is in all the portions of the cross section. So that is gone for Q0 and then I have to write it for the non-Q0 part. So that is going to be minus 12 into 10 to the power 3 by 29 into twice the length of the, so that is going to be 2 into 6 square plus 1 square minus, sorry, minus 40. Okay, so minus it is going to be 21 into 10 to the power 3 minus 21 into 10 to the power 3 by 29. So uh, this is for Q12. Let me write this. 
this is this part is for q12 and q56 okay and 21 into 10 to the power 3 into 29 into 2 into 6 square plus 1 square so this part is because of q23 and q45 okay and then minus 27 into 10 to the power 3 by 29 into 14 okay that that that's all that i have so if i if i simplify so this part is for q34 so this is for q34 so uh, if I if I simplify this, let me try to enlarge this a little. Okay. So if I try to simplify this, then it is going to be Q0. If I add all that up, I'm going to get this as 46.33, and that is equal to. Uh, 27 into 14 plus 24 into 37 plus 42 into 37. Okay, so if you uh, simplify this, then Q0. Q0 is going to come out to be 580.14 Newton per millimeter. Okay, so that is the solution for Q0. Now, if I plug in Q0, I will need to do this. So, if I will plug in Q0 in all the shear flows, then Q12 okay is going to be 166.35 of course newton per millimeter q23 is going to be minus 144.14 and q45 sorry q34 q34 is going to be minus 350.89 okay so i have got the shear flow for the entire cross section now my job is to find out the shear center okay so i will keep this values here and i will actually erase of the entire uh, calculation i will need this figure so i will erase this box Okay, so uh, let me keep a track of all the Q0. So Q61 is Q0, which is
Okay, so now let me find out the shear center. So my job is to now find out the shear center for this cross section. Okay, so uh, to find out the shear center, I have to choose a convenient point about which I will find out the moment. So in this case, I choose six. So the moment will be calculated about this point. About point six, okay? Because I have chose this, I will say my justification. Because if I choose point six, I will have moment at point at point six only due to Q one two. Q23 and Q34. The all other component will have a zero moment. All other portion of the cross section is going to have a zero moment about 0.6. So I take moment about 0.6. Okay. So now, how do I find out the moment about 0.6? So the moment of Q12, so Q12 about 0.6, I have to find out the moment arm. So if I want to find out the moment arm, this is going to be my T6. So uh, let me let me draw the moment arm, the perpendicular distance. So I I I will call this as P, where P is the moment arm. Okay. So uh, what will be P? So P, if I call this to be the angle theta, so P by 8 mm. Is going to be sine theta, okay? Where P is the moment arm, for Q12, okay? So what is theta? What is tan theta rather? Tan theta is going to be six. By one, okay. And if I find out theta, theta is going to be eighty point five four degree. Okay. So this theta is actually eighty point five four degree. So let me find out P. P is there for eight sine eighty point five. Degree, which is equal to 7.89, 7.89 millimeter. Okay, so I have got the uh, moment arm. Now it will be easy to calculate uh, the moment. So let me see what is the moment because of the shear flow. Okay, so. Uh, S y into zeta is going to be Q one two into root over thirty seven, which is the length of one two. So this is length of one two. Okay. Into sorry, into P, where P is seven point eight nine plus Q23 into root over 37 again into P, okay? Plus Q of 34 into I will not find out the momentum again. I am going to consider twice this area. So this entire area is my A. 
if I call A, so the moment because of this is going to be Q34 into 2 into 20 millimeter square plus, okay, so 20 millimeter square plus the total length is 6 into half into 4, right? So what is this? This part is just 2A. So if you remember our earlier lecture, the uh, moment is Q34 into 2A. A is the area about 6, about 0.6, right? So then our job is done. So I know Q12, Q12 is going to be Q12 is uh, going to be 350, sorry. So uh, Q34 is, what, what was Q12 that we have found out? So Q12 is 166. So 166.35 into root over 37 into 7.89 plus Q34 is minus 350.89 into 88 plus Q23 is minus 144 minus 144 into minus 144.14.14 into root over 37 into 7.89. Let us just check the signs one. So Q12 is in this direction. So uh, it is going to produce negative. So Q12 is going to be negative. This are going to be positive, right? So SY is producing an anti-clockwise clockwise direction moment. So this is clockwise. Okay, Q12 is going to produce anti-clockwise. Okay, so Q23 is also anti-clockwise. So I'll take minus of that. And this is also anti-clockwise. So I have just taken minus of all the three. So then your this, if I solve this, Gta is going to be 4.96 millimeter. And that is the shear set. Okay, so with this, so this is an example which shows that if a component of an aircraft has uh, a curved um, uh, portion and has uh, a, a rather complicated geometry, you should be able to find out the shear center as well as the shear flow without much difficulty if you use the corollaries that has been discussed in the earlier lecture. So uh, with this, we, uh, we come to an end to the basic uh, concepts and analysis of a skin stranger idealized cross section. In the next lectures, we, we I will try to solve uh, uh, full scale uh, fuse large problem with multiple booms and see if we can solve it and find out the uh, uh, direct stress and the shear stresses in the component because of an applied shear force. Thank you.